Hello, 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 and welcome. Week 8, problem 1. Figure below is a cross-sectional view of a coaxial cable. Center conductor is surrounded by a rubber layer, an outer conductor, and another rubber layer. In a particular application, the current in the inner conductor is 1 amp of the page, and the current in the outer conductor is 3 amps into the page. Okay, seems reasonable. Assuming the distance D is 1 millimeter, answer the following. Determine the magnitude and direction of the magnetic field at point A. Alright, so we're going to have three equations. There's three magnetic equations we need to worry about in life. So the first one is, let's do this, up, up, B. I'm going to call this B line equals, that's terrible equals. There we go. Let's make this bigger. Zoom. So we have mu naught I over 2 pi r. Okay? I'm going to make a big r. Okay? The other one is for a loop. Loop, which is, hmm, you know, we'll cut that part. Mu naught i, I just have these memorized by now. i over 2r, and then we have magnetic field from a solenoid equals every time, every time. Maybe if I zoom in more. Mu naught i number of turns over length. Alright, so all right. So now that we have our three equations, we're going to solve this. So determine the magnitude and direction of the magnetic field at point A, where A is right here. All right. so we're going to use Ampere's Law, which is basically this equation right there. So Ampere's Law. Bum bum bum. Scroll down a little bit. This guy right here. Integral b dot dl equals mu naught i enclosed. Okay. So, go through this guy real quick. It's worth knowing in life. So I'm going to say what is it? integral b dot dl equals mu naught i enclosed. Very similar to Gauss's law. So the idea here is we're going to use this area right here. It's supposed to be a circle, even though it looks kind of not like a circle. Um, so what we are looking for is the magnitude and direction of the magnetic field. Okay, so the magnetic field, so B is going to be constant, because if we look back here, um, everything's symmetrical. Um, the DL that we're talking about here is this length right there, going this way. So this little DL. So the DL is a small portion of the circle. Uh, I think that's called like an Amperian loop. I don't know. Ampere's law, Amperian loop. That makes sense. Gaussian law, Gaussian surface. Meh. So integral DL. Now this guy right here that I took the B, moved him out there. This dot DL is just going to be the um, circumference of the circle. So we're going to have mu naught I enclosed over 2 pi. Instead of r, I'm going to use a, because that's the distance we're talking about. I guess a is just 1d. So, eh, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to rewrite it that way then. Equals mu naught i enclosed over 2 pi d. And we scroll up, same equation. Same equation, same equation. Perfect. Um, I didn't mention this before. Um, for lines, I usually um, think of, when I think of lines, I'm like, ah, oh, there shouldn't be any pi involved because, you know, pi is for round circular things. Well, there's not really any pi in this equation because mu naught is, eh, I'll make it here. mu naught equals 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7th. So what happens is this pi in the bottom ends up getting canceled out. All right. So moving on, I think I'm just going to solve this right now. Equals. 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7th times i enclosed. And i enclosed is um, the current that passes through the Amperian membrane. Basically, if you take this Amperian loop, shade it, any current that passes through that. So basically, just the inner, the inner conductor. So the inner conductor we have is 1 amp. 
So we're gonna do one amp right here. One. Bam. Two pi. And D, which is what? One millimeter? One millimeter. One times ten to the negative third. So we're gonna do one times ten to the negative third. Which becomes ten to the third on top. Okay. So let's cancel some of these out. Bam, bam. Two. So we have two times ten to the negative seventh times ten to the third, which becomes ten to the negative fourth. Yeah, that's not too bad. Which is two times ten to the negative fourth. I think we're finding magnetic fields. So I'm gonna say Teslas. Yep, ah, but they want micro Teslas. So we gotta convert this guy. So we're gonna do times ten to the six micro Teslas per one normal Tesla. Oop, oop. Hmm. There's probably some funny comic about a bunch of small Teslas running around. So we get two times ten to the second micro Teslas, which is two hundred. Two hundred micro Teslas. So I'm gonna write here. Bam, two hundred. And up here. We're going to find the direction, so right hand rule, place your thumb along the direction of the conductor. Wait a sec, wait a sec, is this? Bam! Mirrored, alright. None of that matters because we're doing back and forward and backwards. Go away, there we go. So we have direction, a magnetic field, wrap your fingers, and we're going to have a magnetic field going this direction. Place your thumb along the wire, wrap your fingers, whoop, like that. Got it. So that is going to be counterclockwise against the direction that clocks go. CCW. Concealed carry weapon? CC permit? Eh, not more. Um, 200 counterclockwise. Got it? Perfect. On to part B. Okay, on to part B. Part B. Determine the magnitude and direction of the magnetic field at point B. Okay, so what's going to happen here is we're going to get two magnetic fields. Ooh, let's make this. Yeah, we're still going to go with the circle. Hope. Maybe that size? Yeah, that's good. Click and drag. Nope. Click and drag. Ah, that's way too big. Yeah, it's terrible. But it's going to work. It's still going to work. Ah, what can I change? Ah, there's the color. Make you red. And thicker. There we go. I really hate red. That is not a good red. There we go. So the idea here is this is going to be the magnetic field. We're going to have the oh, part of it, the inner wire is going to do right hand rule. Oh, wires coming out, thumb, wrap around. So we're going to get oh, wire one, magnetic field from one going that way. We're going to get a magnetic field yeah, I'm going to call this B, actually. There we go. Two going that direction. So we've got to find out which one has the bigger impact. And we can treat this outer cylinder as exactly the same as if it was the inner. Um, and that comes from Ampere's Law. Don't worry about it. If you have a cylinder wire, you can treat it exactly as if it was a wire. Same thing as like when you had like a sphere, you could treat it as a point charge. So, with Gauss's Law. Alright, determine the magnitude and direction of the magnetic field point B. Alright, so I'm going to call this guy, try and keep that top part in, in view so I can use it, kind of like a cheat. So I'm going to say B total equals, equals B2, nah, I'm going to say B1 minus B2. It doesn't really matter which one you put first as long as you know that they're opposite. So B1 and mu naught I, which let's see, we had one and three, right? One and three. One over so it's be one. Let's see, two pi r, two pi, and the distance from the center is what? Three? Three d's. And each d is one millimeter. So will be times three. And I'm going to do 10 to the third up here because 10 to the negative third on the bottom is the same as 10 to the positive third on top. 
three, because three amps over again two pi, and we're still going to use three D on this guy, because and it's three D from the center of this sphere, no cylinder, and not from the edge. Okay, so we'll go down here. We're going to end up with negative. The only part, only part we can't pull out is the one and three, so it's going to be negative two times four pi times 10 to the negative seven. Let's make this pen a little bit finer. Can we do that? I think we can do that. Size is small. Ooh, that's very fine. Over two pi, ooh, that is fancy. Times three, ooh, so fancy. I really like this, it's exciting. No, oh, no, should've made that bigger. God, it's so exciting. Moving from like a Crayola to a pen. This guy's two, that guy cancels, and I'll just be 10 thirds. So then, hmm, still can't do the equal sign, still can't do the equal sign. So let's see, do I have four thirds? Four thirds, 40 thirds. Where did I get that 10 from? Well, oh, that's supposed to be like 10 to the third. So I gotta get rid of the 40, there we go. Yeah, let's get rid of that guy. So, yep, 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 got it, okay. Boop. Mm -hmm. Times 10 to the third. Oh, 10 to the third. That's like 1.33. So 1, 3, 3, 3. Hmm, that seems awfully large. Hmm. Oh, yeah, because we forgot the 10 to the negative seventh. So, also in here, we're all supposed to have 10 to the negative seventh. And on that side as well times 10 and I guess so. There we go. So we get 4 thirds. 4 thirds times 10. 3 plus negative 7 is negative 4. But then we need to convert that into micro. And this will be Tesla's, which is 4 mm -hmm. times Ten. Let's see. Negative six. Negative four plus six is two, which equals thirteen. One hundred thirty-three. And I still have a negative sign in there. Micro Teslas. All right. So the idea behind this guy then. So here we're gonna say since the first part is gonna be magnitude, so we're gonna say one three three. I'm gonna say this guy is gonna be clockwise. So the reason this is, is because, so the negative here basically means that it's going to be the opposite direction of the thing I said to start with. I said B1. So evidently B2 is the stronger, so B2 is going to dominate the direction. And B2 wants the direction to go this way. So B2 wants clockwise. So that's going to be the dominating uh, current. And then, and that's clockwise. So not too bad. Um, so real takeaway from this is use these guys. Those, um, these are the three formulas you basically need to know for this. Ampere's law, mm, no, it exists, but you don't really care about anything beyond that. All right? All right. See you on problem two.